would like to change about the CRO industry? I think it would be really good if we could get more women in representation. As with everything and there are studies on it, the more diverse, not only in terms of gender, but overall different um, aspects, the more diverse the, the group of expert is, the, the better the outcome. I, I just hope that those smaller companies that were just starting or running ad hoc, especially utilizing the free version of Google Optimize, I just hope they will continue. So my, my advice would be to just make sure you continue your experimentation program and that you continue to learn. After the first one of the first talks I've done, I received feedback that I inspired young women that were just starting in the CRO area. Yeah, this fantastic feeling that you as an individual are able to inspire others. And as for all of us women at the same time, it's the responsibility that comes with it. If you're just starting in the field, try to get as many internships and projects, even pro bono as you can on your hands, just to get that practical experience as that is going to give you a head start once starting the recruitment process. You know, as with everything in life, I think a woman has to work as twice as a man to be acknowledged. My advice would be to invest in social media presence and make sure that you're always top of mind. Uh, at the end of the day, CRO is still quite small <laughs> as, a, as a field. Uh, so to ensure that the opportunities are coming your way, network, be visible, be top of mind. Welcome to another episode of the Women in CRO series by WeWO Podcast. This series is an ode to the contribution of women in the CRO industry. Before we speak to our special guest for this episode, here's a quick summary of who we are and what we do. VWO is a leading experience optimization platform that helps fast-growing brands optimize their digital experiences. Using our latest product, VWO Insights, you can understand user journeys and identify conversion roadblocks on your website and mobile app. So, without any further delay, let's jump right into the Hello conversation. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Women in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Sheenal Shah. Excited about today's episode with our guest, Maria. Maria is a dynamic CRO lead at Teletoon Stockholm. She spearheads CRO strategy, driving innovations and optimizations crucial for achieving ambitious CX and sales target. With a keen eye for detail, Maria plans, executes, and evaluates experiments while collaborating cross-functionally. In order to enhance customer experiences, Maria's expertise extends from stakeholder management to quantitative research, honed through diverse roles like marketing analytics team lead at Precise Digital, web analytics manager at Electrolux Group. Join us as we delve into Maria's journey, insights, and evolving landscape of CRO in today's digital domain. Hi, Maria. Welcome to the Women in Seattle podcast. Thanks so much. I'm uh, really excited about this one. Great. How are you doing today? I'm good. It's a little bit rainy in Stockholm, um, but it's Friday. So, you know, it's a it's a good day ahead of the weekend. Yes, it's a good day to wrap up with a good event. All right. I would love to know, like, what were your initial thoughts when you received the invitation to be on the podcast? Uh, I was really honored. I'm, um, you know, being a feminist and, and speaking on behalf of women is is something very dear to my heart. So, um, yeah, as I said, I, I have been actually looking forward to our chat today and uh, I'm curious how it will turn out. Great. In like Women's Day is around the corner. So I'm curious, do you make a point to celebrate it? You mean women in e-commerce? Women in e-commerce and something around Women's Day. Like, do you plan to celebrate it? Yeah, I think there is a women in tech raffle, if I'm uh, if I remember it correctly. So I'm really hoping to get that ticket. You know, it's always an inspiring conference to join. Um, but overall, it's uh, I guess it's a day where we are reminded to make sure we celebrate each other as well and and give ourselves the positive feedback that we need yes that's that's great that you'll get the tickets and like hopefully you'll be able to make up for an event and we'll celebrate <laughs> <laughs> which summit or conference do you enjoy or you enjoyed in your past and it makes you remind of that even today i think i will uh answer twofold because this is a very tough question there are a lot of conferences out there that are great 
uh, just to name the few, Super Week, all the measure comes, women in tech, as I just mentioned. Um, but just to answer from two sides, one as a participant and the other one as the speaker, I'd say from participant point of view, I loved Conversion Hotel. Um, Conversion Hotel awakened something in me. I, I wasn't even aware it was there. Uh, so it's, it's a great opportunity to network, to learn, to get inspired. So I would say that's a really good one. And from a spe speaker point of, point of view, uh, I was really happy to receive a challenge of speaking on, uh, in front of an audience of 1,000 people at Opticon last year. So I would say if I had to choose, I would choose uh, these two. Um, yeah. Great, great. You had like multiple experiences. So like pulling these two and like, as you described, it was wonderful. Like when you get to speak amongst like multiple audiences and from diverse background. Yeah, I, I really enjoy conferences. I think that's the way to to learn. Uh, I particularly enjoy learning from listening to others and others' experiences and learnings as well. So once you know what didn't work for others, then you can try to avoid that. Yes, definitely. And that helps you tune our own approach as well, because that's how we curate ours as well. And we end up avoiding the mistakes that were done in past and learn from them. So. Exactly. And that's how also it matters in the CRO industry as well. The same could be taken forward as well. How has your approach to CRO changed over the years? Like, did you have any myths that were broken, if any? Yes. Um, so since I had, as you mentioned at the beginning, a, a possibility to work with the different organizations, I actually needed to change my approach from one business to another. And since CRO is such a cross-functional area, there are so many different roles that contribute to its success. I think as a CRO lead and person that kind of promotes this culture of being data-driven, um, you have to adjust your way. So for example, Electrolux was really good at testing whatever they were releasing. So working with this release backlog and making sure that the features that were released were tested. Whereas at Tele2, they're very good at user testing, actually, and, and having that initial research before even uh, that reaches kind of product development process. So, um, yes, definitely, depending on the organization, one has to adjust uh, its approach. Um, but as I mentioned also to you before we started, uh, no, no myths broken. <laughs> <laughs> that's glad. That's glad. I think you spent almost nine plus years in that uh phase as well at Electrolux. So the journey would have been great there as well in terms of learning and like trying new things out. Absolutely. The organization has changed tremendously since 2012 when I joined. It was really a pleasure to see how the organization changed and became uh, more and more data driven. It was actually uh, quite satisfactory to see, obviously, as you're one of those ambassadors to drive that change, uh, it's nice to see it happen. That's great. That's great. And we all know that Google optimized Sunset was a major event in industry last year. So how do you feel that landscape has changed for businesses that used to rely on Google optimized? Any advice would you like to give it to them? Yeah, so I mean, we were one of that businesses. So uh, at Tele2, we, we used uh, Google optimize um, still until summer last year. And we were on that bandwagon of uh, kind of panic <laughs> as the announcement went out at the beginning of January. I remember I was at Super Week at the time and tried to confirm the news with Google representatives that were present there and try to pull some more information. What does that mean? Are you going to have another tool? Uh, you know, what was beautiful about Google Optimize is its integration to Google Analytics. That's really, that was the strength and that's where a lot of analysts felt comfortable because they know Google Analytics so well. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's been an interesting process going through the tender and finding the right partner. But I think what I'm concerned mostly about with that change um, of, of the industry really is that those companies that we're running more ad hoc programs when it comes to experimentation. I just hope they continue um because the 
the one risk is that they haven't replaced Optivize with anything, even though there are free replacements out there. Um, you know, after Optimize uh, kind of uh, went away <laughs> from that uh, space, I think each of the vendor vendors available got a little bit of piece of the pie. Um, so it kind of spread <laughs> throughout the rest of the industry. Um, but yeah, I, I just hope that those smaller companies that were just starting or running ad hoc and especially utilizing the free version of Google Optimize, I just hope they will continue. So my, my advice would be to just make sure you continue your experimentation program and that you continue to learn. Um, because that's, I think the okay. biggest risk. It was like a little bit surprising as well, right? Like when it happened, everybody was like looking for what would happen next and what would come in place and all that. Yeah, you should have seen my reaction at Super I was kind of collecting my jaw from the floor <laughs> as the announcement went out. Um, but yes, yeah, some of the more, more seasoned uh, professionals within the industry said that they saw it coming. I didn't see it coming. So for me, it was an absolute shock. Oh, that's that's I mean, that's great understanding from your end as well. And like, I think most of our listeners would also be able to relate with part of the things that you have mentioned about your experience on the news and how you took it forward. And they would also try to take forward the advice who have still not replaced something with they'll try to get themselves into the world of experimentation. What is one thing that you really love about like speaking at summits or one thing that you still find challenging even today? Yeah, I, I will never forget that feeling that I had when um, after the first one of the first talks I've done, I received feedback that I inspired young women that were just starting in the CRO area. And honestly, it, um, the realization really hit me at that time. It was both um, yeah, this fantastic feeling that you as an individual are able to inspire others. And as for all of us women at the same time, it's the responsibility that comes with it. So um, after that, I made sure that that I always come prepared. Uh, I wanted to make sure that my content is even better in the message that I have um, to convey. So it's, yeah, it's it's really that feedback that you are able to give someone else just that little bit more uh, energy to their day. And I think that's the best uh, with all of the speaking events that you are able to inspire others. And in terms of a challenge, I, I still find it challenging to be able to find content. Um, you know, when you do a lot of talks and uh, and speeches, you want to make sure that you deliver quality and you yourself need to get inspired. So I think that constant search for um, for content can be can be frankly exhausting. So yes. Your experience would be like curating each and every day as and when you pass those events. So I think, and that's a constant fuel as well to the next event. Absolutely. Can you talk about a specific project or achievement that you still are proud of that even today? I am uh, really proud of, of us winning Experimentation Culture Awards last year. Um, it's something that Yes, it, it, it became even more valuable once I met other companies that competed against us uh, during Conversion Hotel. So it's yeah, just very gratifying to see all your hard work and your efforts are being recognized, especially on this international field. Um, so yeah, definitely um, really, really proud of that one. That's great. That's great achievement in itself and like it would be a memory forever as well. Yep, and I have the uh, the statue also to kind of memorize it. So I have the trophy um, that yeah always reminds of that achievement on the bad days. Yes, that we still have. We had something, and we can still do beyond this. Absolutely. I mean, as optimizers, you know, you don't only optimize the websites or the channels you're responsible for apps. You also optimize your life and yourself as individuals. So you always want to be better and, and you always learn. This is the area that I think is never stagnant. You, you continuously learn. We continuously learn and add and then 
like learn from our mistakes too because when an experiment fails it's that's the main thing that also like helps set in our life that if failure is not one stop it's just that we reiterate some some good things from that and like move forward so i think that also goes hand in hand with our current understanding and the industry implementations as well you have been into the industry like for quite a long time is there something that you find that organizations get wrong about CRO even today and any misconceptions that lack awareness about certain topics even today in the industry? I think what I've seen um, in the industry is that some organizations think that CRO can be delivered with one individual. So they hire um, probably a fantastic person and there's nothing against that person, but experimentation is such a cross-functional area um, that I think not or lacking that awareness about the uh, how co the comple complexity of it um, puts them directly into a hard situation to get out of because one person cannot carry the weight of changing the culture of the company. So I think that's a mistake that I see happens often. And another one I would say is um, not having enough resources and not dedicating enough developer resources to experimentation programs. Um, again, I think that just comes with maturity of different markets. And uh, the more you experiment, the more you understand the, um, the importance of the development resources. Uh, so those would be the two that uh, I see happening over and over. Um, so hopefully we'll have less of that in the future. Yes, more the awareness, I think lesser would be the confusions and misconceptions. Mm -hmm. And the field is also expanding, like uh, back some years back, it was like a little bit new and like it was less aware as well. But gradually we see that awareness has started increasing and people are contributing more to the forum through LinkedIn and many other channels as well. So I think that's a good fuel for others to get inspired as well. Absolutely. There are a lot of communities and uh, um, events uh, where it's important to be present at and to get that exposure and visibility. Um, so yeah, especially if you're starting in the field, there are certain Slack channels such as um, CRO Nordics or Women in Experimentation or Test and Learn Community. I think those are really good places to uh, to start and be present at and then some of the events that we already mentioned, uh, it's really good to to learn and participate in those. Absolutely. And if you were to put yourselves in a shoe of young women, what would, like who would want to enter the CRO world, where would you like to start from? Yeah, so I, as I just touched upon, I think that the most important thing is just to be present, uh, show up. Uh, there are these networks and events that can get you uh, started. So we mentioned the Slack channels. In terms of events, I would say from the paid ones or so Conversion Hotel, there's Women in Tech that is uh, for free, Conversion Jam, Growth Marketing Summit, Measure Comes that are for free. Uh, then Experimentation Culture Awards, uh, actually announcement is a nice uh, um, kind of event to listen to. There's a lot of knowledge there as well. Then there's also Experimentation Elite and all the vendor conferences, you know, VW, Content Square, Conversionist, Self-Optimized, the Experimentation. So all of these are worth the joining. Um, and if you're just starting in the field, I know that it's really important for the companies to choose someone that has most work experience, uh, even if someone just finished school or so studying. So try to get as many internships and projects, even pro bono, as you can on your hands, just to get that practical experience, as that is going to give you a head start once starting the recruitment process. So um, yeah, always try to learn and, and stay up to date, as that might impress uh, the next hiring manager. So I'd say those will be a couple of tips for those that are just starting. Glad. And any piece of advice like to the mid-level people who have already like seen CRO or are trying to improve further? Because they are somewhere who started some time back and like they would want to continue, but anything that should fuel their experiences or they should follow, like apart from the one that you said that they should continuously contribute and like apart from contribution, they must also take from the community. 
Absolutely. And I think for for women that are trying to build their careers, um, as I mentioned, there is right now this fantastic network of women in experimentation and their purpose is exactly that, to lift each other and uh, bring more visibility to uh, female CRO exports, experts. Um, but, you know, as with everything in life, I think a woman has to work as twice as a man to be acknowledged. Uh, and my advice would be to invest in social media presence and make sure that you're always top of mind. Uh, at the end of the day, CRO is still quite small <laughs> as, a, as a field. Uh, so to ensure that the opportunities are coming your way, network, uh, be visible, be top of mind. Yes, that's valuable for all our listeners and all of us. One last thing that I wanted to know, would you want to ever deliver a TED Talk and what would be your message? Like if one word around that. Oh, that's a tough one. I think, uh, as I've mentioned, because the more you talk, the better you want your quality to be. Um, I have no idea what the TED Talk would be about. Uh, maybe it would be about CRO. But, but potentially it will be about something broader, um, such as us just developing as humans throughout our whole professional and personal life. I think those are the topics that interest me. Uh, regardless of what it would be, uh, I would definitely prepare a lot to do it, <laughs> just to make sure that it's spot on. You only get probably one opportunity like that in your life. So That's true. And tell us like uh, one word describing your experience talking to us in this episode or maybe a short description around that. I mean, I'm just happy that these topics are being discussed. You know, the more we talk about women in experimentation, the more visibility we give to women in experimentation. So I think this is also my attempt to give back a little bit to the community. Uh, as you said, we take from the community when the opportunity comes. But at the same time, we owe it to give back uh, to other women that are just starting or want to build their career. That's great. And that would help them like uplift, like you mentioned, like there's there are communities out there who are trying to uplift each other. And this way, like once you have taken something, when it's time to give back, it definitely it would be given back to someone who is new. So the cycle continues and we keep evolving. Exactly the transfer of positive energy. Yes, true. All right, then we had a fantastic discussion and it's now the time to switch gears and enter our rapid fire round where I'll put some quick questions your way and would love to hear your spontaneous responses. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Three apps that you cannot live without. Oh my God. Instagram, LinkedIn and Gmail. All right. If a movie was made about your life, what would the title be? Luli? I have no idea. <laughs> Aspiring speaking or maybe uh, something around like, as you said, like this topic also interests you about uplifting women and like giving back something around that? Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, it might be. All right. And one thing you'd like to change about the CRO industry? I think it would be really good if we could get more women in representation in the CRO area. Uh, I think, as with everything, and there are studies on it, the more diverse, and not only in terms of gender, but overall different um, aspects, the more diverse the, the group of experts is, the, the better the outcome. Um, so... Yeah, if I could change anything, I would uh, increase the diversity in the field. Great, great thoughts. And what's the most random fact that you know by heart? Um, that, oh, this is maybe not appropriate. Let me think about something else. <laughs> um, I know, I know. Uh, carrots. The original color of carrots was purple, not orange. And actually, it was colored orange after the uh, Dutch royal family. Uh, and their last name was Oranje. So that's where the, the color orange came from. So that's a random fact for you. <laughs> oh, yes. That's surprising. I, I didn't know that. I mean, if it was purple and we generally, whenever it comes the name of carrot, it's like the orange shade and that comes in picture. Yeah. No, originally they were purple. So 
What is your guilty pleasure TV show or movie? Oh my. Um, so we are currently watching Love is Blind. <laughs> As with all the experiments, we just really like the scientific part behind it and you know that people are actually trusting their lives and their partners' lives uh into into this experiment, one big experiment that Love is Blind is. So yeah. I love uh, any of these and otherwise all the matchmaking shows. Uh, so yeah, I love all the culture bits of uh, the matchmaking shows from Netflix. You <laughs> learn something about different cultures from that. If you had a podcast, who's the first person that you would want to invite on the show? Oh, Ton Vesseling. That's an easy one. Ton is a fantastic person to look after. He's a great mentor person that always is uh, ready to offer wisdom. So that's an easy one. Ton will be definitely the first guest. <laughs> I hope this podcast reaches Ton. <laughs> great. Three books that you would recommend to our listeners. Ooh, um, we are all feminists. Uh, so that's actually quite a short book, but really impactful one. Um, Invisible Women, a really good book, actually full of statistics about presence of women in today's life. Um, and the last one I would go for um, Controlled Experiments by Ron Kohavi. So just, uh, let's say, a guiding book to zero. Great. And like, what is one superpower that you would want to have if given a chance? I would love to be able to teleport. Uh, I really like traveling, but sometimes the travel time uh, is not that pleasurable to spend, you know, all these uh, hours on a plane. So if I could, I would love to be able to teleport. Okay. <laughs> like, what's your favorite destination? Like you mentioned you travel, you wish to travel and you love to travel more. This topic, I would say, is separate for a whole podcast about traveling. I love traveling and can talk about it for hours. But um, yeah, I actually, the planner that I am, I plan the next 20 years uh, of my life of traveling. So I want to make sure that the destinations I choose are the ones that I really want to go to. Um, so yeah, one of uh, the destinations that are in the next years is New Zealand. So I'm hoping that I will be able to reach New Zealand soon. And uh, otherwise, there are other destinations such as Japan or Canada also on the list yet to explore. OK. Hope you reach Japan too in near future. I hope so too. As long as I get to live <laughs> to experience these 20 more years, we'll be, uh, we'll be very grateful. Glad. What is one thing that you're tired of like explaining to your clients? Ooh, um, so being a part of telecom industry, there are a lot of things that I think our customers do not understand. Uh, one thing uh, would be feasibility. So as a telecom provider, whenever the consumer is looking for their bro broadband connection, they actually have to fill in their address so we can determine whether our network is available at that address or not. And it is very top of mind for us because obviously we offer that service, but it's not something that consumers are thinking about. And they don't want that hurdle of filling in their address. They're like, why can't you just tell me what the prices are, or which internet can I get without me filling in my address? Uh, so yeah, it would be great if, uh, if we <laughs> have a little bit more, um, yeah, I don't want to use the word mercy, but if <laughs> maybe they have a little bit more understanding uh, towards us there, that would be fantastic. Great. And one goal or dream that you'd want to achieve in the next three years? Oof. Um, I mean, I think, as I've mentioned, traveling is quite important to me. Uh, there are also these from, from women and from development point of view, I'm quite an ambitious person and I would love to be a part of uh, some of the leadership uh, programs that are there for women in Sweden, such as Spaderes or uh, Rotterdam. So uh, that would be a fantastic achievement if I manage to do it, uh, let's say within the next five years. All right, so hope you reach till the, all the achieved goals and may you achieve all of them. Thanks. All right. Anything else you'd want to add from your side and for the audience? No, 
uh, have a fantastic International Women's Day and uh, continue to kick ass. <laughs> Great, great. Big thanks, Maria, for joining us today and sharing your valuable insights. Thanks for tuning in to Women in CRO. Remember, together we are driving the change and shaping future of CRO. Until next time, stay curious. Keep exploring, everybody.